What we know about ancient civilizations comes from what they've left behind. Sometimes it's a piece of pottery, part of a tool, or a piece of jewelry. Archaeologists look all over the earth for such remnants of these ancient civilizations to put together a picture of the past. But in Egypt, there are clues that are hard to miss. They weigh six and a half million tons. They are taller than the Statue of Liberty, and they're as wide as 10 football fields. You don't need a trowel and a brush to discover these artifacts because you can actually see them from space. What do you think it is? If you guessed pyramids, you are correct. Walk like an Egyptian. Hello, my name is King Tutankhamun. I'm also known as King Tut. At the age of nine, I became an Egyptian pharaoh when my father died. That was in 1333 BC. But unfortunately, I was only ruler for 10 years and met an untimely death myself. Today, I'd like to take you on a journey of my tomb. We believed in the life after death. So everything needed for the afterlife was buried with me in a place called a tomb. My tomb was located in a pyramid in Egypt in a place called the Valley of the Kings. I will be your tour guide for today. First, I'd like to introduce you to Howard Carter. He's the man on the left and he's the archeologist that discovered King Tut's tomb in 1922. Over to the right is Lord Carnivon. He's a gentleman that financed the archaeologist's work of Howard Carter. They are actually standing in front of King Tut's burial chamber in this picture. The ancient Egyptians did not want anyone to enter the tomb. So once it was closed after the death, they concealed it extremely well. This is a map of the tomb that held the body of King Tut. Today, we are going to take a virtual look into each room. First, there were 16 steps that led to a long passageway with a completely sealed door at the end of the hall. The antechamber is the largest room and the first room of the tomb. This chamber contained many treasures like carved chairs, beds, chariots, and Tut's famous golden throne. This room was left almost untouched. It's assumed that tomb robbers had broken in more than once because everything was unorganized. They said that tomb robbers thrashed about the chariots in search of gold. From the antechamber, a hole in the wall leads into the annex in which the majority of the king's personal items were stored. It included things he used in life and items needed for his next life, such as pots and pans, food, games, stools, vases, chests, figurines, clothing, and other personal items. The purpose of the small treasury room was to hold some of King Tut's most glorious pieces, such as statues, model boats, ornate chests full of treasures, items of pure gold, and pictures that showed King Tut's life. A little further down to the room was a large shrine that contained the organs of the pharaoh. Anubis was placed in the front of the room to protect those items for the king's afterlife. The burial chamber had the most important and glorious treasure ever found in Egypt, King Tut's mummy. This is a picture of his shrine. Inside of this one is another, and in that is another. It reminds me of the Russian nesting dolls that get smaller and smaller. But inside of the third one, was a solid gold coffin called the sarcophagus that held the mummy of King Tut. Well, hello there. You are looking at the golden coffin of King Tut and that's Howard Carter gently cleaning it. Once the coffin was open, there was a burial mask on the mummy's face. The mask of the mummy was very important. If the mummy's head was damaged, then Ba, the spirit, could recognize the body and return to it. 
The most famous death mask is that of King Tut. It was made of solid gold and had beautiful stones inlaid upon it. Not all masks were so elaborate. Some were made of paper mache and covered with a thin layer of gold. Speaking of mummies, mummification was mainly done to wealthy people. Ancient Egyptians believed that in order to reach the afterlife, the dead person would have to repossess his body, and this was the only way to preserve it. It's kind of gross and a bit strange, but they first pushed a hook through the nose and pulled out the brain and threw it away. Then a cut was made on the left side of the tummy in order to remove all internal organs, the lungs, Intestines, stomach, and liver were each placed in canopic jars and eventually buried with the mummy. The corpse was stuffed, cleaned, covered with salt, and left to dry for 70 days. Then it was wrapped in linen and placed into the sarcophagus and taken to its final resting place, the tomb. I hope you've enjoyed learning about the ancient Egyptians, King Tut, and mummification. I'd like to thank these websites for their information and photos that were used in this presentation.